so welcome back or welcome for the first time i'm kyung and last week we painted on buttercream with some food color gel but this week we are trying something new and i think i like the results even better we're painting on american buttercream again and i plan on doing swiss meringue buttercream in the next few weeks to see how these products work on swiss meringue i really like frosting with swiss meringue because you can get a really smooth clean finish and it's a little easier to work with an American buttercream in that way. So this is what we're painting today. I did some experiments that I posted on my Instagram about how I did some little practice test runs with this technique and the color didn't bleed and the whites didn't crack. So if you tried anything from last week's tutorial or if you do in the future, I would love to see it. If you're having any trouble painting on buttercream, go ahead and ask me any questions that you have in the comments because I am doing a lot of experimenting and hopefully I can come up with some answer for you. All right. So for today's painting on buttercream lesson, what you're going to need is a paint palette, some brushes, soft brushes like watercolor brushes, a paper towels or a rag, got our petal dust, and some water to clean our brushes, and then a bowl filled with hot water that I boiled in my tea kettle. And we're gonna use some cocoa butter here. I will put the link down below for that. That's all you really need for this. So all you're gonna do is place your palette on top of your bowl of hot water, and you're gonna put one little disc. If you're in a hurry for it to melt, you can come in with a little clear dome or something or a bowl to trap some of the heat, but it doesn't take very long at all. And while I'm waiting, I'm just going to put some of this petal dust into the wells. All right, so now you can see that little disc is all melted. So you have just a little well of cocoa butter and then we can start painting. So what I like to do is come in and just dip my brush into the cocoa butter and swirl it around into the first well that I'm going to use into the first color just to loosen it up. Also, if I want to mix colors, I often do it on the rim out here, I'll just pull some out if I want this to be lighter and then I'm gonna dip into the white. All right, so I've chilled my cake in the fridge for half an hour or so, and so I'm just gonna start painting. Today we're painting a succulent. I'm going to come in and do an outline. And then all I'm doing is I'm coming in, I'm dipping my brush into a little bit of the cocoa butter and the blue, mixing it into my green here to make a darker shade. Back on my hot water. And then I'm just going to come in and paint the bottom parts of each. Are they petals? What are they called? I'm not sure what they're called on a succulent. I can't think of it. You let me know in the comments below what it's called. I don't remember. Where these two come together right here, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap between these dark areas for now anyway. There's going to come a point where when you're painting, you'll start to notice that maybe the paint isn't spreading as easily or it's sort of making these little like pox or little bubbles in your buttercream. And the reason for that is because it's getting too warm. And so your the oil is getting too warm and it's sort of melting your buttercream. So at that point, you're just going to want to take it off the water. And then at some point you'll notice that it's starting to be too stiff and then you can just put it back on your water. So throughout the whole time that you're painting, you're going to be moving it on and off of the hot water. Okay, so for the next part, I'm just going to dip my brush back into the cocoa butter and into the white. And I'm just mixing a paler green. And I'm going to apply that to the top part of the leaf. And now I can feel that it's sort of stiffening 
up a little bit and the color is not going on as smoothly. So I'm just gonna put it back on to my hot water. So we have it all blocked out, the dark area and the light area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm dipping back into my cocoa butter that's in the center of the well. And then I'm just picking up a little bit of color of the light color I just used. I've wiped my brush off. Getting a little of that cocoa butter on my brush. And I'm just blending it out. You can kind of mix a mid-tone between these two but it'll be a, a little more saturated with the cocoa butter than originally what you were painting with. I haven't cleaned my brush throughout this whole process except for to wipe off the extra paint on my paper towel. It's not really necessary to use the water yet unless you're switching to a whole new color. But you can also, after you wipe off your brush, just come in sort of in the darker section. And if you just come in a little bit and then drag it up into the lighter section, it's going to start to blend the color for you because it hasn't dried all the way yet but it's very important that you're using soft watercolor brushes because if you're using the hard bristle brushes, it's going to gouge your buttercream too much. And then I'm just gonna tidy up some areas that I think need to be a little darker, have more contrast in here. Sometimes to help blend the color out, you might run your brush very lightly horizontally across instead of this way, just to sort of smooth out the transition. And then like something like this, where it lost a little of its shape, you can come back in a little bit of the light color and just pop it back forward. So there'll be a few places where I think I'll do that. All right, so now I'm going to make some, just a couple of little leaves. So I'm just mixing the brown. I, using my same brush, I didn't clean it out. And some white. And right now I'm using, I have quite a bit of cocoa butter on my brush and just a little bit of the pigment so it's more of a translucent color. And then anywhere where something goes over something else, you wanna create a little shadow. So the object underneath looks like it's behind the object in front. And I'm just gonna create some subtle veining with a little bit of darker brown. Now I'm just gonna go in with some of my green without the blue and a little bit of white. Still haven't cleaned out my brush, by the way. I'm going to paint a few thin stems like this. So I'm mixing a little bit of the white uh, with a tiny bit of the pink petal dust. And I still have the brown and green in my brush, so it's not making like an obnoxious pink. And I'm just gonna dab. And if you ever need to add a little white or another color and you don't have it on your palette, you can just dip your brush in it really quick and pick up some. It doesn't really leave any of the other color in there. All the colors is stuck to your brush, so. So I didn't like that color green. I thought it was too bright. So I'm just darkening it up by adding a little brown into that color. And I'm just gonna go over it with a really thin liner brush. And then I mixed some of the pink with a little bit of the brown, and I'm just gonna add the base where these little flowers meet the stems, just sort of darken it up a little bit so they connect. And then if you wanna soften any little part a little bit, you can clean off your brush just by wiping it on the paper towel and then dipping it into just the plain cocoa butter and just sort of very lightly going over what you painted. 
and it'll just soften it just a little bit. If you made a huge mistake, it's not going to take it away. In fact, if you make a huge mistake, you're probably just gonna have to scrape that part and start over again. There's not much you can do. It's not like fondant where you can just wipe it off with vodka. So I would say plan out your drawing ahead of time. Make sure you have reference pictures and draw out the outlines first and then just sort of treat it like you're coloring in a coloring book and that's gonna be the best way for you not to make a major mistake. So basically that's it and I'm just gonna futz around with it a little bit show you what it looks like when it's all done it's pretty much done if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below oh and one more thing when you're done make sure to clean your brushes thoroughly put a little soap in the palm of your hand and swirl your paint brushes around and make sure you rinse them really well with sort of lukewarm water you don't want to use hot water because it will damage the adhesive and your little bristles will start to fall out and once they're all clean and the water is running clear then you just want to pull them together like this pull the bristles up so they come to a point and then you're just going to dry them standing up take care of your brushes